With hundreds of miles of trails and dozens of pristine lakes, it's safe to say Barron County is a prime candidate for outdoor adventure. But there's more than meets the eye here in Northwest Wisconsin. So today we're exploring the hidden gems and history of one of the most beautiful areas in the state. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. This is an anthem For those who look for more And never say they've seen it all Windows and blacks Take a ride The good lands great Tonight Barron County is in the northwest part of Wisconsin. It's basically right at the top of the Driftless area. There's a bunch of rivers and lakes that go through here. You have a nice set of rolling hills. It's just a really, really beautiful part of the state. So we're starting off in the Blue Hills, which is this beautiful geologic area in eastern Barron County, and it's very serene out there. And within the Blue Hills, you have all of these landforms that are perfect for mountain biking. Great. You already got some nice trails up here. Oh, thanks. Thanks for coming out and enjoying some time out here today. I mean, the Blue Hills are gorgeous. I love the topography here. Tell me more about the trail system. So two years ago, we started working on this system, and it's the Pipestone Quarry Trails. We've got about seven miles of single track out here right now, and uh, going to keep expanding from there. But it's kind of a unique piece because uh, it's got a lot of rock, as you've yeah. <laughs> got to see already. and. So it's a little different than the most of the trails in the Midwest. So what's the story with the pipestone quarry? So uh, a couple hundred yards from where we're at right now is a Native American pipestone quarry. Um, and it was one of the two places in uh, North America where the Native Americans used to come to get uh, catlinite. So when the Native Americans first pulled this out of the ground at Pipestone Quarry, the rock would be kind of like a sandstone. It would be very malleable. So they would carve pipes out of it and other things, and then it would harden and then they could use that to transport water or do whatever they wanted. It's kind of a unique piece of history. Very cool, yeah, because I've heard of Pipestone, Minnesota. Yep. This is the Wisconsin counterpart. This is the it? Wisconsin counterpart. That's all right, we can ride our bikes to it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't have to just pedal your way through this terrain. You can also jump on an ATV, and we went over to Almina to check out this really cool ATV park. You really want to tear it up, this is the place to do it. Barron County's intensive use area was developed about 10 years ago, I believe in 2007. In Wisconsin, I believe there's only six or seven or maybe eight what they call intensive use areas. Basically, it's a playground for ATVs. And we wanted to draw people to Barron County. We had access on our current trail system, which butts up to the uh, cattail trail system. And it was just a perfect opportunity to get people to come in and play. Uh, we started Googling different ATV trails, and this came up as the number one hit, so we, we had to check it out for no fee use. I mean, it's just, it's been great so far. And we've been here for pretty close to two hours now, and we ran some of the cat tail trail and some of the other trails that they have set up. I, I believe it's an A+. Plus. It's, it's got everything for uh, any type of uh, rider or driver. I definitely want to come back and maybe bring a few more friends and stuff. The curvy bit that's on the other end of here. And then you got some, some pretty big bumps to go on after that. And it's close and convenient, and uh, I would definitely, you know, come back here in a heartbeat. Plan your next trip to Barron County at discoverwisconsin.com. Coming up next. Mm. so well. Stay with us. We're back in Barron County, right here on Discover Wisconsin. When I'm traveling, I'm always thinking about food, who isn't? And one of my favorite spots in Northwest Wisconsin is Norski Nook. If you have not experienced one of the Norski Nook locations in Wisconsin, 
you're missing out. There are four of them, Osseo, DeForest, Hayward, and right here in Rice Lake. So when I think of some of the iconic spots in Wisconsin, some of those restaurants that have to be on everyone's bucket list, Norsky Nook is one of those spots. Why do you think that is, Lori? Well, number one is our pie. We have 43 national pie winners. You just can't beat a hand-rolled crust. Not only do you make homemade pie, I mean, this is some of the best pie you can find, I think, in the state. It's really, really good. It's actually in the nation. We go down every spring down to Kissimmee, Florida, where they have the national pie contest, and we have 45 national pie winners. Wow, that's crazy. Are there certain flavors of pie? I know I told you that I've tried a lot of them, but I'm, I'm sure there's plenty on here that I haven't yet delved into. Are there some that um, you think are, are good ones, are maybe hidden gems on the menu, or ones that I might Actually, not my favorite pie is a seasonal pie. They only make it in the fall of the year, and actually that we have it now, and it's our harvest apple. Ooh. And it's done like a Dutch apple. It has pecans in it. We drizzle it with caramel, and we top it with whipped cream. Oh my gosh. And I wait all year. I'm actually Norwegian myself, so I may be a little bit biased here, but I love Norsky Nook because of the Norwegian flair. You know, everything from the little flags on the table to the lefse on the menu uh, to all the desserts in the cases. I have my eye up on every single one of them. Uh, I love that they really kind of hold on to their Norwegian roots. Okay. And this is the moment I've been waiting for. We got some Norwegian pancakes here I'm about to dive into. I think it's gonna be awesome because it has whipped cream on it and powdered sugar, two of my favorite food ingredients. Mm. And some lingon berries. Mm. So well. Really, really good. So Norwegian pancakes are a bit more moist, thinner. Thinner but more dense than your typical fluffy pancake. A little bit more to it. Delicious really, really good. And I like that they put four dollops of whipped cream on this. I think that's what really makes it. This is harvest apple pie. So I, I told you I've tried a lot of the pie on the menu here at Norsky Nook, but this is a new one for me. And Lori tells me it's one of the best and it's seasonal. It's only available in the fall. So special little treat here. Mmm, that looks delicious. Mmm, it's so warm. Apples. There's some pecans in there, whipped cream, I think some caramel drizzle. Mm. That is what fall should taste like. So good. If you're a big fan of Wisconsin Supper Clubs, and who isn't, when in Barron County, you have to check out Layman's Supper Club in Rice Lake. It's been here since 1934, and it's open right now. Well, we're a full-service restaurant. Supper Club would probably be the best description, although do we, we do a lot of other things also. And I think what sets us aside is the idea of quality and service that we do and the tradition that we have. Everything is from scratch. We make our salad dressings, make our soups. Everything comes in as fresh as we can, and we do it from scratch. We do it course by course. It may take a little bit longer, but as is with all Supper Clubs, it's an experience. I had a nice little surf and turf meal there. Fantastic. It all started with French onion soup, and it got even better from there. Head to discoverwisconsin.com to download a free itinerary from this episode. Coming up next... So you can wash yourself with grass-fed bison. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it right here. Yeah. Discover Wisconsin is back, exploring Barron County. Barron County has a pretty fascinating history, and one of the coolest ways to learn about some of the stories coming out of here in Barron County is through the Barron County Historical Society's Pioneer Village. Here at the Pioneer Village Museum, we're preserving the history of this part of Wisconsin. We have an 1880s village, complete with a working blacksmith shop, a church, a one-room schoolhouse, some cabins. Families come and they can spend the whole day. And there's something for everybody. So we have a heritage garden that represents immigrant groups that settled in Barron County. Norwegians and Germans and Irish. And 
this year we're using a Polish garden as a representative of one of the groups. The people who immigrated here from Poland knew that they could plant root crops because they were easy to store and easy to prepare in ways that they could save them over the winter. They also grew a lot of herbs and they used um, certain kinds of flowers to keep the bugs out of the garden. So that's what we have here in our Polish garden. I demonstrate blacksmithing techniques and give a little history on blacksmithing to people. Typically back, way back when, you know, there was a blacksmith or two for every town and he took care of the needs of all the people. A lot of people, they don't really understand what it takes to blacksmith. And there's some kids that are just like I was when I was young, you know, it's just like, wow, you know and you explain to them a little bit what's going on there and, you know, it, it sinks in. They're very much one with the land here in Barron County and the farmers very much into grass-fed with whatever they raise. We met up with North Star Bison. They raise grass-fed bison. Very healthy, very tasty meat. So I'm with Sean here at North Star Bison and Sean, North Star, what, uh, what is your specialty here? We raise and finish grass-fed bison. So your focus is grass-fed? Yes, yes. Grass-fed bison is a niche within the bison industry. So about 90% of the bison uh, finished around the country is actually finished on grain. We do ours 100% grass-fed and finished from start to finish, um, from you know calf till harvest about three years of age. So closely monitored, so, about as healthy as you can get, right? Right, exactly. So they're raised and finished here in Barron County. Mm -hmm and you have a store here in Rice Lake. Yep. So what can people expect when they come in here? Um, so we started with the bison, and then now we, we process a lot of different animals, and all raised at the same standard as, as our bison. So we have a strong clientele that's looking for really healthy, nutritionally dense proteins, and they love our bison, and they say, hey, what else can we buy from you? So this is our wholesale outlet, so people can stop in and get a great price on a lot of our specialty meats. Yeah, you have everything, chicken, pork, and beef, and bison. Mm -hmm. I even see some fish and some soaps. Yep. You carry some other locally right. made products here. Yep. Soaps yep. and honey. And That's right, yep, yep. So we have uh, a lady actually just uh, north of us up by Webster, makes, uh, hand makes all of our bison soap. It's all made out of bison tallow. So that's pretty unique. Yeah, I've never heard of bison tallow soap. Sure. So it is about as natural as you can get. Exactly. Locally yep. sourced mm -hmm. and tasty. Yep. So you may or may not have picked this up about me so far, I have a very intense sweet tooth. I heard about a spot called Anderson's Maple Syrup. Now, this stuff is some of the best in the entire country, and you can find it right here in Northwest Wisconsin. Anderson's Maple Syrup Incorporated is the name of our company. We were established in 1928. We are now in close to 9,000 grocery stores around the United States. When syrup is stored, so you make it into syrup right away. Sap will spoil if it's stored for 24, 48 hours. So it has to be turned into syrup immediately. We put in the bottles hot, about 30 degrees hotter than most people do. And that extra heat, that extra boiling, that extra time that we take locks in a freshness into our bottles that very few other people do get. Yeah, I get uh, asked quite a bit about, you know, the family business and, and I say, you know, that's why our product is good because it's my name on that bottle and I don't want to disappoint my father, I don't want to disappoint my grandfather. I want to be able to pass this on, I want it to, to continue to grow and so far we've been successful at that. See more behind the scenes pics from our time in Barron County at discoverwisconsin.com. Coming up next. Stay with us. We're back in Barron County, right here on Discover Wisconsin. I love myself a summer fair. I grew up going to the Rock County Fair as a kid showing sheep, and this for me was better than any summer vacation my family could have taken. We always looked forward to fair week. It's a big deal here in Wisconsin. The Barron County Fair is one of the biggest festivals and events here in Barron County. I consider myself something of a county fair extraordinaire. Here is my rundown. First, you gotta check out the Carnival Games. From there, I ate a lot because it's not a county fair without eating a lot, so you gotta do that. And you gotta hit the rides for sure. We went on the zipper 
which looks way less intimidating than when you're actually in the cart. And then we kind of slowed things down a little bit and went on the Ferris wheel, which is another classic ride at a fair. You've got to do the Ferris wheel. Fairs to me are such a big part of Wisconsin summers, from the games to the animals to the tractor pulls. There really is kind of a little bit of everything. And to me, it's always been about celebrating rural Wisconsin. Barron County does it right. So then we went to far western Barron County and Turtle Lake, hit Village Park for their cars, crafts, and rock and roll show. Lori, I see quite a variety of cars around here. Mm -hmm. This is clearly a big draw for the community. What can people expect when they come to see this? Well, we have a beautiful showing of cars, as you can see, and they range from anywhere from 150 to over 200 cars for people to browse through. We have our craft fair attached under the trees, which is an added draw, especially for the women that come. And we have great food and 50s music. It's just a great community get together. I come here every year and hopefully to win a trophy. It's a 1957 shelf. I've had it since 1974. I did an off-frame restoration on it. It was painted 25 years ago. Always enjoy the Turtle Lake Show. Well, it's a Graham Prosperity 6, cheapest model they made in, for competition that year. 70 horsepower, 1931. I've uh, started with the Graham and just seemed to like to collect them all. There are fewer than 10 outdoor movie theaters in Wisconsin, and Barron County claims one of them. So if you're into that sort of nostalgic, grab the family, enjoy lots of candy and food while watching a movie outdoors during the summer months, then you have to check out Stardust Drive-In. Emily, I love drive-in movie theaters. There's something about them, like some kind of nostalgia, I think it brings out in all of us, and there's not very many in Wisconsin. What makes you guys unique in comparison to some of the other? Theaters? I think we have become um, very up-to-date with all of our technology. If you go to a lot of drive-ins, um, they just keep it on the very like old side. You have to pay cash for everything, whereas we are trying to keep up with the times, we're trying to make sure we get the newest movies. We just try and keep everything really up to date and fun for our customers. Okay, so I love a good movie, but one of the best parts about coming to see a movie are the concession stands. Yeah, for sure. I have had so much fun in Barron County. In fact, I feel like I could live here. It's such an amazing place. All right, snack time. To me, Barron County is an amazing place to honestly play, but also work and live. The beauty is unparalleled. You know, it has a lot of those beautiful, iconic Wisconsin activities that you can do here, but there's also a lot of really unique spots tucked away in Barron County. This is a spot that should absolutely be on your list. Discover Wisconsin is the state's leading media brand. Continue the adventure at discoverwisconsin.com and stream episodes on YouTube and Roku TV.